What up, everybody? D-Mac finally linked back up with his boy Marshall for the first time since being shot, shooting some hoops. And D-Mac showed Marshall his strap and said he wasn't ever going to be caught slipping again. Then when D-Mac went to the barber shop to get a lineup for his date, he walked in on Seamus, pointing his gun at Tommy and Diamond, threatening to kill them and burn the place down. So D-Mac did what he had to do, not knowing he was killing a cop. I know these actions are going to have consequences, but personally, I'm so happy that D-Mac made that call because in my personal opinion, Seamus was one of the most annoying characters in power history, right up there with Greg Knox, Jenny Sullivan, and Mike Sandoval. But like Diamond said, after D-Mac killed Seamus, what are we going to do now? And this is the big question. Obviously, the first thing they will need to do is get rid of Seamus' body and have the barbershop cleaned. Then the next moves are going to be very important. What do they do with his badge and his patrol gun? Keep in mind that when Kane killed Officer Ramirez, that he kept both the gun and the badge. First, him and Tariq used the gun to kill Professor Jabari Reynolds and made it look like Ramirez fled town after killing Jabari. But when that plan put Zeke in jeopardy, Kane then planted Ramirez's badge in Tariq's dorm room which eventually got to recharge with double homicide. Since Seamus is a dirty cop, dropping a body with his patrol gun and making it look like he fled town would be a logical idea. You never know, Tommy may drop Claudio with Seamus' gun, but it doesn't matter who, a body is a body. But the major concern that they're going to be facing is Seamus' patrol car, that is most likely parked outside the barber shop or right around the corner. This patrol car will have a GPS tracker and a dash cam. So before they can move the car, they will have to put on a mask. Not saying that would even work, but even if it did, it would likely take away the option to make it look like Seamus caught a body and fled town. So really, the whole situation is one big mess. Now Tommy and D-Mac got to tell JP what happened also. Or do they tell JP about this? Not saying he would snitch, but you want as few people knowing something like this as possible. But at the same time, JP can't be left in the dark about this either in case the feds start coming around asking questions. Keep in mind of all the people that had to get involved in Tariq's first kill of Ray Ray, another dirty cop. They had to get Lakeisha involved to say that Tariq and Tasha were at the penthouse that night. And she also had to lie and tell the cops that Kanan was at the penthouse and had opportunity to take the gun. And obviously... This is what calls Kane in his life because they thought making him the fall guy would work, but it only bought more time until the feds found out that Kane was in DC at the time Ray Ray got killed. And this is even what ended up causing Tariq to shoot Ghost. Ghost trying to make Tariq turn himself in for Ray Ray. So there are a lot of questions that will need to be answered on the fly. They might even have to bring Kate in and use her for an alibi. Ghost and Tommy have used Kate for an alibi before. The time that comes to my mind is when they kill Lobos. But Kate had to get help from Angela getting her story straight before she was actually able to face questioning successfully. The good thing is Diamond has a lawyer in his pocket and she could definitely be coming back into play now also. I know the first comparison that comes to mind when it comes to D-Mac killing Seamus is Tariq killing Ray Ray because both of their first bodies was a dirty cop. 
But for the purposes of this video, I want to make the comparison to a young Michael Corleone. Michael's upbringing was actually somewhat similar to Tariq's, as they were both shielded from the life, except Michael's family never tried to hide who they were. They were actually hoping Michael would become a politician to get them more political power. But after Vito got shot, Michael decided he would give up his future ambitions and get into the life. And he would be the one to take down Solozo and McCluskey, a drug dealer and the police captain who put the hit out on the dawn. Michael was able to successfully kill Solozo and McCluskey, but after he was sent out of the country to Italy to lay low and be out of the way until things cooled down. And this will be the same move that Tommy decides at the end of the day is best for DMAC, JP, and Kate. And it's probably the best idea anyway, even before this happened, to get his family away from him because they could all end up being potential targets from one of Tommy's enemies, just like JP was kidnapped at the end of season one. Now, if we go back to the Ghost season three finale, when Tariq went to Kate's looking for Tommy, there was moving boxes all over the house. Most everybody assumed it was because Kate was moving to Chicago. And as of right now, we know that Kate hasn't even been back home to get her things since first arriving in Chicago because she's been wearing a lot of JP shirts around the house. But I think those boxes were there because JP and DMAC are moving in with Kate. Also, there's the fact that Kate was not living in the same house that Tariq and Diana went to in Ghost Season 3 that she was during Power. Now, she could have moved sometime during Power, but there's also a chance Tommy bought her a bigger house to have room for JP and DMAC. Right now on our current timeline, Kate is working on staying clean and sober and has been going to AA meetings. The last time we saw Kate on episode 3, she was 10 days sober. But she will relapse at some point because she was drinking when Tariq went to her house looking for Tommy. Will Kate relapse because of everything that is going on with DMAC? And because her grandson is in danger. Kate decided to get clean because of DMAC. So obviously she's trying to do right by him. So will the stress of worrying about him cause her relapse? We know that Ghost used to suffer from alcoholism also. And him and Kate would bond over a drink. Just like Kate and Tommy bond over cocaine. So could this cause DMAC to turn to alcohol also? And before Kate and them leave town to move to New York, I'm hoping that Kate has at least one run-in with Herman, JP's father, her baby daddy, at least one of her baby daddies. Through four episodes, we have not seen Herman, and he was not happy JP initially made contact with Kate. But we haven't heard anything from him since. Also with DMAC moving to New York. It will set the stage for him to have a role on Ghost Season 4. And there you have it. Tommy sends DMAC and JP to New York to live with Kate. Leave your thoughts, theories and predictions in the comments.